All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So this lesson is it's about like basically a wi uh, world wiper. Um, this video is going to be about a disease that just circled throughout um, Asia and, and Europe and the Middle East and things like that. And uh, it was devastating. So I've had a lot of students in class who are like, man, that sounds like COVID type of stuff. It's like, this was actually a lot worse, you know, uh, in the sense that it killed a lot of people. You know, and especially at that time of the world and some of that. Remember, our population now is like eight, eight and a half billion people. Uh, back then, it was less than half a billion, and it killed a lot of people. So, which plague is that we're talking about? Well, that's we're gonna talk about the Black Death, how it started. You know, we're gonna examine how and why the Black Death spread so quickly and amongst the mainly in Europe, how did it spread so fast and quick and things like that? And then we're creating an argument on what is the best thing to do in a pandemic or a plague? Okay. Now, here is your warm-up picture. Now, it might be hard to see if you're on your phone and you have a smaller phone, um, but for those of you guys who could see a little bit clearer, um, what is going on here? You know, um, so... What evidence is there to show you what to explain what is happening? Okay, so I've heard some people say certain things. I'm like, well, what proof do you have? And they point out, oh, this person has this, this person's doing this, things like that. Um, so be sure you point out proof. Don't just say, oh, I see people. Well, great. But what proof do you have that that person is, you know, going through this certain thing or whatever it may be? You know, so be sure you add proof, okay? So, pause the video, write your response, because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so the Black Death, also known as the Great Mor Mortality, um, what we know it now as what kind of plague it was. It was the bubonic plague, okay? Does the bubonic plague, is it still around? Believe it or not, it is. Okay. Um, the student asked me that earlier. Is this plague still around? Yeah, it is. The thing is, we have medication now. We have different things to subside it. You know, if you get it taken care of right away. Now, if you let it linger and things like that, let it, oh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll get rid of it. Then that's when it gets worse, you know, and it's harder to treat. But if you take care of it right away, you'll be fine. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what kind of symptoms are we talking about? Basically, your your lift glands will be swollen. It'll be like a frog, okay? Um, you'll get those, these boils on your skin. Like, just imagine a pocket under your skin, and your skin is stretched out. I mean, really stretched out. And inside is blood and pus and things like that. And the only, like, um, pleasure... Or anytime it was going to feel good is when those things burst. So, and that thing, when it bursts, that's, that's your skin that's breaking apart and, you know, things like that. So you have an open wound, but that's the only time it'll feel good is when it's released, all that blood and pus and things like that. And it's not just on your arms, it's under your armpits and your chest, your back, it's everywhere, your legs, you know. So imagine these balls, boils all around you, everywhere in your body so yeah it's not the best thing on top of that you have things like typical thing fever chills headache shortness of breath um hemorrhaging hemorrhaging was a big one now hemorrhaging if you don't know is basically when like blood vessels burst and things like that and blood escapes and um typically you would see this when a person uh their eye you know their eyeball like is red Usually it's a vessel busting in their, in their, uh, in their eye. Um, but this is like blood vessels inside and outside just bursting and blood being released, you know, so it's not that great. Um, also vomiting was very, very common. 
Now, I know the survival rate says 30 to 50 percent, and some students have said, oh, well, that's not that, that's too bad. The thing is, you have to remember, it depended on your certain area, and this was a collection of places. So some places you might have like an 80 percent survival rate because of where you lived and things like that. But another place, the best you could live, maybe 10%. You know, so, yeah, it just depended on where you lived and basically how the uh, virus was with the climate that you were at. Okay, now here's another thing too. This is what I want to be show you in class. You know, if you look at this map, if you look at the, the little number of years, just like how things are right now um this plague did not just come and go and then that's it oh, we're done for a year we're good no this thing lingered around for like seven years and just like how covid is around still like some students said do we even still have it yes it's still around you know people are still getting it but the thing is now that a lot of people have gotten it um we've taken the shots and things like that and we know how to combat it, you know, so it doesn't affect us as much as it did when it first came out, okay? Now, strangely enough, just like COVID, um, it started in Asia. So if you look at that map and that green section, you see those arrows going outward? That's how it went. Basically, it started in Asia, and it went out, and it went to other places, okay? Now, in the place Kafa, it's this basically it's a town uh, right by the port and thing is um the uh the people of kaffa closed their gates because they were being attacked by the mongolians now the mongolian people the warriors a lot of them were dying of plague and they knew they couldn't attack this town of kaffa you know if their soldiers are dying from the plague so what this one uh, Mongolian king decided to do was put the dead bodies on a catapult and shoot them across the wall. You know, I should say over the wall, not not across it. Because yeah, no, <laughs> they went over the wall. So you can imagine these bodies filled with this boils of pus and blood, just flying around and bam, hitting a the roof of a house, and all of a sudden all that blood and pus just squirting everywhere you know um the, the body's hitting trees and all, all of a sudden that blood and pus just <laughs> scatters everywhere you know on their food their water their dogs i mean everywhere now this is the first time that biological warfare is introduced okay and it's done by the mongolians okay now a student tried to tell me in class well isn't that chemical warfare no no chemical is man-made this and that Biological is nature made. This uh, bubonic plague is nature. It's not man made. Okay. Now, here's the thing like I told you, Kaffa was a city on the port. So there were boats there, and people were getting on the boats trying to get away from the plague because they saw what it did to people, how sick it made them. So people were like on these boats, like, oh, I'm not sick. I'm fine. Look at me. Look at me. No fever. No, I'm good. Look at. You know, so yeah, they were good at first, but inside they already had the plague. It was already working inside their bodies. So when these boats landed at certain areas, a lot of the people were already dead. And then once they got off the boats and into these other port cities, they just spread the plague. And cities suffered dearly for that. So like Constantinople, 90% of the population died from the plague. 90%. So think of 10 people, and of all those 10 people, just one person survives. Okay. Um, Sicily, 33% of the population dies. So for every three per people, one person dies. So that's quite a bit. And in other Italian port cities, I mean, it ranges from 50 to 60% of the entire town die. Um, when the plague gets to England and Europe and things like that, um, Germany specifically, uh, entire towns are dead. Like, it's a ghost town. People will go to the city and also it's like, hey, we're, 
what happened to everyone in this little town? They're all dead. You know, they all got wiped out by the plague. Um, now, again, at first, people don't know what to who to blame or how to blame somebody or things like that. But they just need someone to blame. So, of course, the Jewish people were the the scapegoats. Yeah, let's, let's blame the Jewish people. And they killed a lot of them. Thinking, okay, yeah, these Jewish people are the ones who started it. Let's kill them. They had nothing to do with it. Okay. Now, some people who were in those port cities, when those ships came in with all the dead and stuff, after a while, they realized, oh, my God, I need to get out of here or else I'm going to get sick. So they, too, just like the people in Kaffa, left going, oh, look at me. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sick. I'm not throwing up. I'm not vomiting. I'm not, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm, I don't have a fever. I'm good. But inside their bodies, the virus is already just destroying it, you know. And again, because they are now going into other cities, they are carrying the disease with them and getting other people sick. Okay. Now, October 18, uh, 1348, King Edward III decides, you know what? This place is getting way too hot to many sick people. So he takes his daughter and decides, I'm going to go to the countryside. So he tells the servants and people, hey, go get some food and things like that, you know, to last us, last us a while. So they go. The thing is, these servants and people, they get sick too. And when they go to their, uh, to his castle out in the, you know, out in the countryside, uh, the daughter gets sick and she dies from the plague. Now, King Edward III could have easily said, you know what, oh, let's blame the Jewish people. Let's blame these people. But he looked back and like, how did this disease spread? And he looks around London and England and goes, my God, we're filthy. There's garbage all over the street. There's human excrement. And if you don't know what excrement is, it's basically the pee and poop. There's that all over the, 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 the walkways, the alleyways, even in the streets, there's pee and poop. The river, the river Thames. Where people, you know, go swimming and get their water. People are dumping all that pee and poop in there too. You know, so it's just nastiness in that river. And people drink that water. Go swimming in it. And he's like, yeah, that's what's spreading this plague. It's our uncleanliness, our nastiness that's causing this. It's not helping. It's making it worse. So he's the, really the first guy to realize maybe cleaning sterilizing helps stop diseases. Now, I love this story. Uh, in March 1350, Scotland is still under control by England. And Scotland doesn't have any sick people with the plague. Not one. And so these guys are like, hey, you know what? We should attack England. You know, they're sick. They're dying. Their soldiers are dying off. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we should get our freedom. Let's go attack them now that they're at their weakest. So these soldiers go, they're marching, and they go to the border to wait to attack. Now, some guys decide, you know what? I'm going to town, get some to drink, maybe meet some girls, things like that. Now, the thing is, because they're so close to the border, the plague has spread to there too. And some of these soldiers come back. Right. And now they're infected and they start spreading the plague amongst the other soldiers. So when Scotland is ready to attack England, these soldiers start falling one at a time because of the plague. So if they had just stayed home and thought, you know, what, we'll just wait till England is completely done with this plague is over and they're barely getting on their feet, then we can attack and get our freedom. That would have been a different story, but. They didn't, so a lot of their guys died. Now, speaking of this, how did this disease spread? What was it? A lot of people think, oh, it's the rats, which the rats um, were the carriers, but they weren't the host. The host was actually the fleas. The fleas rode on the backs of rats and things like that, and they would then get onto other things, okay? 
Now, did the fleas bite the rats? Yeah, they did. You know, but didn't kill like all the rats all of a sudden, you know, things like that. But the thing is, um, being having a flea on you back then was not like how it is now. If a flea jumped on you, it's basically like a fly. If a fly got on you, you'd be like wiping it away, things like that, right? Because you're not you're not used to it. You're not used to flies just flying all around you, being on you, and things like that. But back then, they were used to fleas being on them and flies hovering around, things like that. So when a flea bit them, it was just like, oh, whatever, you know, it meant nothing to them. Now, these fleas would be on people's coats, their blankets, and things like that. And early on, when the plague really hit uh, in Asia, people would see a dead body and be like, you know, that guy don't need that jacket no more. He don't need those fur boots or that fur blanket. So they would take it. Like, hey, that dead person don't need it. But on the blankets, on the fur, on the coats, there was a plague with those fleas on it. Now, years later, when... People realize, like, hey, people are dying from this. They're falling over and things like that. They're coughing. So when they saw a dead body, they left it alone. When they saw money near that person, they'd be like, I'm not touching that. They could have, you know, done something to it. And, you know, no, I don't want to touch it. Um, people would even leave their relationships. Um, I've read stuff about people whose boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, daughters and some of that sons even their mother father's kids they would even leave them behind put them in a room and just leave them to die you know and they would go away somewhere get away from the disease not everyone was there like i'm with you all the way things like that because they were fearful that they might get it and that they might die it was a real thing okay now, because of that, just like a student's notice, too, they go, well, when everything stopped, kind of like how COVID did. And it did. Trade stopped completely. And the thing is, too, things were shut down, especially the church. Now, I've told you guys before, peasants, all they had was their souls. Okay, and that's basically all they had. And now they're trying to go to church before they die to get their last rites and things like that. But they're denied. Now, if you're not a Christian or a Catholic person, basically what happens is this. Before you pass away, a priest will come to you and tell you, you give you your last rites. And basically ask you, do you, you know, are you sorry for your sins you committed in this life and things like that. And then when you say, yes, I am, they basically forgive you of it. And your soul, in a sense, is cleansed. It's clean. So that if you do pass away, you go to heaven. Um. People who were dying were denied that. Uh, going to church. Churches were closed. Uh, people weren't being blessed anymore by priests. Kids weren't being baptized. And on top of that, confessions were not heard. So these poor peasants who felt like all they had was the church were being denied by the church. And they felt that their the church was basically condemning their souls to hell. So, yeah, that was really bad. So for the first time in like history, the church is seen as powerless. No help is coming from them. No amount of prayer is getting rid of this disease. So normal people decide, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And one of these groups were called the flagellants. These are people who felt that they needed to suffer like Jesus suffered, you know. And so for 33 and a half days, these guys would get these whips right they're leather whips and they would have like little pieces of metal sticking out at the end or you know little pieces of metal all throughout the, the the strips and they would whack themselves with it and whack themselves with it right and the thing is this pieces of metal the little shards of it when they ripped it off it would rip off part of their skin you know, so yeah, it was very, 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 very painful. And here's the thing. There would be people, these guys would march for 30, 30 and a half days. There'd be people going through the towns that they marched through, just watching them, 
And like I told you, when that they ripped off the skin from the back and blood was shoot out, these people, when they got the blood on their face, they would wipe themselves because they felt that that blood was holy and things like that, like that. So, yeah. And like a student said in class today, isn't that just going to spread the disease? Yes. Because if they're sick and it's in their blood system, they spread it around everywhere. Yeah, those people are going to get sick. You know, now in 1351, somebody had the great idea. Why don't we just stay in our place, keep away from everyone else, and just wait for this disease to fly over us? And what do you know? It actually worked. You know, it really slowed down the spread of the, the virus. Now, with all said and done, um, a large chunk of the world population died from this. But the silver lining of all this stuff is this. Because a lot of people who died were workers, you know, the regular people, um, now there's not enough people to do all the jobs that need to get done. So a lot of workers or the, the owners of factories and farms and things like that would tell people, hey, why don't you work at my place? I'll pay you. How much are they paying over there? Five bucks. I'll pay you eight dollars. And the other place would be like, no, 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 no. I'll pay. They're paying eight dollars. I'll pay you ten dollars. You know. So the workers ran an advantage that they were now getting higher pay. And this is where a new concept comes in: days off. Is that even possible? Yes, it is. This is where the people start realizing that they can get days off. Because, yeah, they worked seven days a week. You know, they worked every day on the farms and things like that. Now they have a chance to just do nothing. And this is where vacations come in. Again, this, that, those type of things never happened before for the working people. You know, they would call it a vacation. Uh, rich people took vacations all the time. They were basically, hey, we're going to go and leave to another out in the country houses and things like that. They would call that a vacation. The workers never got that. So now here's a chance they can get vacation. So, wow. Mind blown. Now that, too, there was less people, but there's the same amount of fields, same amount of food being, you know, available. The price of food goes down. Because there's so much food. And remember, this is before refrigerators and all that stuff. So the food rots after a certain while. So they got to sell it quick. So prices of food goes down. Prices of a lot of things go down. Because again, they can't keep the prices way up here. Because hey, they can find it cheaper somewhere else. Somebody else wants to sell their product. So they'll lower the price. And then these guys will have to lower their price. And then these guys will have to lower their price. So Things got better for the people who survived. And on top of that, now that a lot of people died, there's more space. There's more space to have a home, to rent out places and things like that. So, yeah, for those who survived, things were a little bit better. So here's a picture of the whips. Um, the one you see to the far left is a more, um, you know, nicer version of it. Um, the middle one is kind of what they use. Uh, those are hardcore guys with those little balls with the spikes in it. And as you can see from the one on the far right, this stuff still goes on to the day. Okay. Some people still do this stuff. And as you can see on their backs, that skin completely gone. You know, so yeah, it's very, very painful. So here's my question to you. Would you stay and help your best friend if they had the plague? Knowing what you know now, things like that, would you help them? Okay, so think about it, write your response, explain why or why not, okay? Uh, so once you're done with this question, you're done with this lesson. So hopefully you learned something new, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, with that being said, guys, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later, okay?